This video is sponsored by Geology, but I'll talk more about that later. The Tesla Cybertruck has been rolling off the production lines for over a year now, and the data is finally in. How much range do the new Cybercells lose after 50,000 miles and 70,000 miles? And does this number outshine the original Gen 1 4680 batteries? Let's dive into the numbers and find out. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. When the 4680 equipped structural battery pack Model Ys hit production, its Gen 1 4680 batteries faced a rocky start. Tesla encountered a number of manufacturing challenges limiting output, and worse yet, those batteries had disappointing energy density and charging speed, leading to quite a letdown from what was promised at battery day. But thankfully Tesla never stands still and they have improved those batteries and now they have a new second generation Cybercell 4680 battery that's in the Tesla Cybertruck. With these cells, Tesla made some chemistry and design changes that not only have led to more energy density, but as I'm going to talk about, I believe it's also leading to lower battery degradation. Beyond the cell design and the chemistry of the battery, the degradation is generally in proportion to the number of charge cycles and the calendar age of the battery. And in addition, factors like how the battery is treated by the owner play into this. For example, environmental factors like extreme temperatures or regularly charging to 100% and letting it sit there or deep discharges can accelerate degradation and lead to a greater reduction in the battery capacity. Nonetheless, electric vehicle manufacturers do offer pretty good warranties, like for example, the warranties I have listed here on the screen. But notice that these warranties guarantee at least 70% retention of the battery capacity with the stated period of time. For example, with the Cybertruck, Tesla guarantees a 70% retention of battery capacity over the warranty period, which is eight years or 150,000 miles. Nonetheless, before I go over battery degradation data, I recently partnered with Geology to bring you this sponsored portion of today's video. In the past, I haven't really had much of a skincare routine, but as I get older, taking care of my skin is now much more of a priority, which is why I was happy to partner with Geology and test out their high quality skincare products. For example, they sent me the Moab Super Clean Body Wash, two bottles of their everyday face wash, one for the shower and one for the sink, their moisturizing morning cream, their night cream, and their eye cream, which is their dark circle formula. One thing I really like about these products is they have a very pleasant and subtle aroma, not super overpowering like some other products. And they seem to be really well formulated because these products leave my skin feeling clean and refreshed. I really like that it takes only a little bit of each product to get the job done. A little bit goes a long way, which means each bottle will last a really long time. Now, if you're like me and you're somewhat new to the skincare routine, I like that Geology included a great instruction card with the product so you know how to use it properly. Geology has a number of different products to help with your individual needs. And if you wanna try it out yourself, Use my link in the code below to get 70% off your custom skincare starter set. That's a full month trial for only $12, plus you get a free gift and up to 50% add-ons. Trust me, your skin will thank you. Okay, I'm going to dive into the first generation and second generation 4680 battery cell degradation numbers, but as a baseline, I wanna talk about the Model S, X, 3, and Y, and the historic range loss of those vehicles. So this data was pulled from tessie.com forward slash stats. And as a reminder, Tessie makes a phone application that allows you to track various metrics for your Tesla vehicle. And I recommend that you check out Tessie's website. I will link to that in the video description below. But nonetheless, you can see that after 50,000 miles, the Model S historically with this data is expected to lose around 4.2% of its battery capacity the Model X 5.3%, the Model Y around 8.3%, and the Model 3 around 9%. After 70,000 miles for the Model S, that's 5.3%, Model S 7.4%, Model Y 9.6%, and Model 3 10.3%. When it comes to the first generation 4680 batteries that were in a Model Y variant for a short period of time, back in January of last year, 
I requested this data from Tessie. And on this chart, you can see that after around 50,000 miles, those batteries lost around 7%, according to this data. In addition, at around 63,000 miles, those batteries lost around 8.2% of their capacity. So when you compare this to the rest of Tesla's lineup, that battery degradation is kind of middle of the pack. However, I recently reached back out to Tessie to request data for the Cybertruck, because I was curious how the new cyber cells were holding up when it comes to battery degradation. And they graciously sent me this chart showing that the battery capacity loss after 50,000 miles for the new cyber cells is only around 3.8% and at around 70,000 miles, only 4.1%. So whereas the first generation 4680 batteries were kind of middle of the pack when it comes to degradation, the Tesla cyber cells seem to be doing better than the batteries in the rest of Tesla's lineup. Now make sure that you stick around because I am going to highlight some of the changes that Tesla made from the first gen 4680 batteries to the second gen 4680 batteries. And some of these, I believe, influence the degradation loss being less for the 4680 cyber cells versus the first generation versions. But nonetheless, anytime we talk about battery degradation, I like to go ahead and talk about what that means when it comes to actual range loss with the Cybertruck. In this chart, you can see the range that Tesla lists for each variant of the Cybertruck. And then you can see after 50,000 miles and 70,000 miles using Tessie's data, you can see that I've listed there what the expected range should be after that amount of miles. Nonetheless, I do wanna talk about an outlier. Out of Spec Studios, specifically on their Out of Spec Testing YouTube channel, recently published a YouTube video entitled Tesla Cybertruck Battery Capacity Test After One Year and 25,000 Miles. Technically, the Cybertruck in this video started out with a mileage of 26,174 miles, and the time since the truck was purchased was roughly one year. The host did make very clear that this comparison was made to their first test that they did when the truck had a few thousand miles, and at that time, they were able to pull 123 kilowatt hours from the battery pack. But nonetheless, it's a comparison against when the truck was fairly new. Now, at the end of the video after the test, it's revealed that that Cybertruck lost between 5.5 and 6.2% of its battery capacity, which is a little bit higher than the data from Tessie. However, it's important to note that this Cybertruck was used pretty hard at the beginning of its life. I recommend that you watch the out of spec video, which I will link to down below for all of the battery care details. But on the screen, you can see a brief highlight of how this battery pack was treated. Nonetheless, this Cybertruck battery pack was definitely not babied, and I wouldn't say it was completely abused, but it was used very hard, and that's why I believe that degradation number is a little bit higher than Tessie's data, and Tessie's data is more than just one single truck. It's a larger set of data, so I believe it represents a better picture of Cybertruck battery degradation. So once again, going to this chart, it appears like the second generation 4680 batteries are experiencing around 50% less degradation as compared to the first generation 4680 battery cells that were found in the Model Y. Okay, I now want to move into some of the changes that Tesla made from the first generation 4680 batteries to the second generation 4680 batteries. And I believe there are some of these changes that actually influence the lower battery degradation loss of the new cyber cells. Now, some of these changes that I'm going to mention also led to the new cyber cells having a higher energy density than the first generation 4680 battery cells. That energy density went from around 244 watt hours per kilogram to around 272 watt hours per kilogram. Some of these changes included a cathode chemistry change, which according to this slide that was shared in a video on the YouTube channel, The Limiting Factor, you can see that the nickel content of the new 4680 batteries, the cyber cells, has gone up to over 91% as compared to the first generation batteries, which had a nickel content of around 81%. Jordan was also able to confirm that the new cyber cells have a thinner exterior metal can. And as was revealed by a Tesla patent application that I covered in a previous video, he confirmed that this new battery did indeed have the redesigned lower profile battery cap design. In addition, when it comes to the anodes of these batteries, it looks like with the cyber cells, Tesla is now using synthetic graphite, whereas with the first generation 4680 batteries, according to my research, it looks like Tesla was using natural graphite. Synthetic graphite can have higher purity, more structural consistency, and better thermal conductivity. And data seems to suggest around a 10 to 20% increase in cycle life with synthetic graphite anodes as compared to natural graphite anodes. So I believe this move to synthetic graphite could be an important part 
of the lower degradation that the data seems to suggest for the cyber cells. In addition, another important factor that could lead to these batteries lasting longer and having lower degradation is something that Jordan expects. And once again, this was mentioned in a video on the Limiting Factor YouTube channel, but Jordan expects that the cyber cell should have less resistance, mostly due to the new cyber cells having thinner cathodes and anodes as compared to the first generation cells, which should lower the ionic resistance of the battery cells. So if the cyber cells do indeed have lower resistance, which it appears like the design should allow for lower resistance, this means less heat generation when charging and discharging, which should help extend the life of the batteries. So thus it would make sense that the cyber cells are having less degradation. Of course, there could be changes that we don't even know about that have improved this, but nonetheless, it appears like the new cyber cells will lose less range than the first generation 4680 battery cells did. And so far, it appears like they're outpacing the battery cells used in the rest of Tesla's vehicles. With all that being said, please let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to know your thoughts. And in addition, I'd like to say once again, thank you to Geology for sponsoring this video. If you wanna try out Geology products for yourself, use my link and the code below to get 70% off your custom skincare starter set. In addition, I wanna say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.